And this one I wanted to show you the basic language that this calculator has. So if you go into apps, go into your program editor, and I'm doing current because I already have a program. Um, okay, so I'm doing a couple things. I have a program called Coin. I first, um, well, let me just go down. I clear the screen and I calculate this random number between 0 and 1. If that's the case, um, if it's greater than or equal to 0.5, I display the number and I give it a value of head. Uh, I say the result is heads. And I store 1 to this um, vector that I've initialized up here, this list, in the teeth position. So for the first one, you know, t equals 1. So I store it to the first place of that list. If it's less than 0.5, I, I display it again and I store tails. And what I do is I keep track of the mean of the vector of ones and zeros. And if you have a vector of ones and zeros, the mean of that vector is just a probability, a percent. And I also store that percent to a vector called y. Add one to the counter, I have a little pause, and then I loop back to a which is the start of the program, or almost the start of the program. Clear the screen and start over, okay? So, call that by doing coin. So my random numbers is 0.64, or I should say a pseudo random number, 0.64, greater than or equal to 0.5, so the result's heads. And I have only flipped one coin, so I only have a, a one for heads. I flip again, the random, pseudo-random number is 0.1529, that's tails. I have, uh, in the vector I have a 1 and now a 0, and the average of 1 and 0 is 0.5. So I'm just going to press enter a bunch of times, so you can kind of watch how things change. I should probably probably also have a counter maybe displaying somewhere over here or down here of how many times I how many coins I flip or how many times I flip the coin. I'll just press it a bunch of times and um, you know maybe we get around a hundred or something like that. So you could have this program saved in your calculator's memory you know, whenever you need something like a coin flip. Um, of course, you don't have to have a program for this. You could just do RAND and then the parentheses to get a random number between 0 and 1. So let me just do this a bunch more times. But this calculator has a lot of good built-in probability stuff already. But making the programs can sometimes make things easier, make it a little more customizable. But it has a lot of good random features. And not just random, this, is, this would be a pseudo-random uniform number because it's random between 0 and 1 with equal probability. You can also do random normal numbers, binomial, I think Poisson, T, F, just the common statistical functions. And of course you can make programs for other ones. Okay, so let me stop this. Okay. So the long-term probability of flipping a coin on this calculator for as many flips I did is about 48%. We would expect it to be around 50%, so maybe that's good enough for the relatively few number of flips I did. Let's look at a couple things here. Let's look at this y. Well first let's look at the x, um, the flip vector. So that's just a bunch of ones and zeros keeping track of the heads and tails. Let's look at the y vector. So this keeps track of the long-term probability of basically probability of heads. So you can see a change over time. I'm going to do something, let me see how many observations are in this list. 
so dim is a dimension, 154. So I'm going to do, I'm going to create a sequence um, from 1 to 154, and I'm going to store that to a variable called x. So x is just the numbers 1 to 154. Now I've already gone into my um, y equals area and set up a plot, I'll show you, where for x I'm just graphing x, that sequence from 1 to 154, and for y I'm graphing y, which is the, the probability of heads. I'm doing it in a line, so graphing a line, and my mark for each point will be a square. So let's see what happens. I go the graph. Oh, and I also have this drawing a reference line at y equals 0.5 because that's what you would expect in the long run. So let me zoom. Let me um, let me zoom standard here, kind of the default zoom. Here comes that line at 0.5. Okay, let me zoom. Let me zoom fit. So zoom fit basically, I'm sorry, I don't want to zoom fit. Yeah, sometimes that gives really weird errors when points are close together. Let me zoom box. I want to customize where I can zoom. I'm going to zoom, what, did, what happened? Zoom box. Huh. What did I do? Zoom box. Zoom box window variable error. Hmm. Let's see what I did here. <laughs> Good troubleshooting live. Live troubleshooting. Let's see if I can do it. Okay. I want to do a zoom and a box. There we go. First corner. So I'll just select somewhere around here. It doesn't really matter. Second corner, maybe around, just so I have some of the data covered. Okay, here we go. Comes a line at point five. I wish I could zoom, zoom the data. Sometimes that works pretty well, other times it doesn't. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So you can see it start to converge after a while. And that's what you would expect. You know, if the, if the pseudo-random number generator or a random process in real life um, maybe to be good or something or to have a property that is desirable, you'd expect it to converge after a while. And there's actually a, a result from, what is it? The strong law of large numbers. It's some type of law of large numbers, which tells you after so many number of flips, what you'd expect the deviation to be between your observed observation and the horizontal line. So anyways, I was just showing how you could use kind of basic probability stuff, the random function, and use the basic programming which we found in the program editor to kind of make it a little more customizable and then how to do a basic graph with data and a line. So thanks for watching. Sorry for a little um, hiccup with the zoom. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but I'll look back at the video and figure it out. <laughs> And I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.